Welcome to Practice Squad Podcast, episode 11. I'm John, and I'm joined by my friend here, Mark. And Mark, to me, like this week really felt like the NFL was in pure, true midseason form, right? We had blown calls by refs that had the entire NFL mad. We had coaches getting fired before we even made it to the bye week. All sorts of drama. It was a blast to watch. Uh, I don't know. Like to, to me, this was probably my favorite week yet uh, of the league. So I don't know how you're feeling about it or what. But I'm feeling the same, man. Up and down week. Um, a lot of different stuff happened around the league this week. We, we we found out a lot about some teams, a lot about some coaches. And I mean, as the weeks go on and on in this league, teams start to step up or teams start to kind of fall apart. And um you know, as, as we as we get into like bye weeks and stuff, teams can really change in a bye week, and I'm excited to see kind of what happens as we get into this. But another great weekend of football, man! Excited to talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'd say overall too, like you know, this was actually our best week for both of us as far as predicting games went. Finally, I can claim victory over you. I ended up uh, <laughs> going 12 and four for the week. I believe Mark went 10 and six. So, you know, kind of as we predicted, right? Once we started to figure out which teams were good, which teams were bad, we, we really started to kind of figure this out and our, our records <laughs> really did a lot better. So uh, we've been a lot better. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, pro- probably, uh, you know, something that we're actually satisfied with versus predicting, you know, like spreads or something like that. I mean, it's, it's looked horrible. So <laughs> uh, at least we act like we know what we're doing around here. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, the more you watch teams, the more you learn about them, the more you see what they're capable of and, you know, you can pick on matchups and stuff like that. So, you know, I kind of predicted that would happen with you and I. And so far, it's it's been happening. We've been a little bit better with our picks. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, you know, I think, like, ones that I'm proud of personally, right, is, like, talking about Dallas. You know, like, not, not only are we able to pre- predict them as a winner, but we were able to predict why they're going to be the winner, where it's like, yeah, they have that really dominant yeah. defensive line. Stafford's going to be running for his life. He's going to be under pressure. Sure enough, that's exactly, I think, what decided that game for them is that uh, Stafford just was super uncomfortable this entire time. And we've seen it throughout the season that, like, man, if he doesn't have time in the pack pocket, he just, you know, starts stressing out and then laser focusing on cup, making mistakes, kind of saw that happen. Any given Sunday, man, anyone can win. It's, I mean, at all, at all levels, football is a game of matchups and game plan. And if players execute the game plan and, and coaches can outsmart each other, then on any given Sunday, man, any any team can win. And when you can start to see how that's going to shape up just based on previous games, it's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. All right, you ready to move on to our guest? I am, man. So uh, we're excited. John and I are excited to have on Troy Harrison. Uh, we're going to bring him on here in a second. Uh, Troy is a teammate of mine at Central Michigan, played at Birmingham Senior High School, which me and John actually played against him our junior year. Uh, he walked on at Central earned a scholarship, became the MAC Defensive Player of the Year as a defensive end, uh, was voted a first-team All-American, went undrafted, went back to the underdog mentality, went undrafted, and then this year made the Houston Texans 53-man roster and currently starts at fullback uh, for the Texans. And uh, so we'll bring Troy on and get him some questions. Troy, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you Good. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. So kind of as Mark was alluding to, and this is kind of the the first question I have for you, right, is like you've always had this mentality of having to be an underdog, right? You walked on at Central. You had to grind to earn that uh, scholarship. You're coming to the NFL as an undrafted free agent. You're crushing it, you know, making that 52-man roster dream come true. You know, how has that kind of like mentality helped you through all these trials and tribulations to make it to the point that you're at today? Man, it's a uh, it's it's crazy. It's kind of indescribable. It's a uh, it's a it's a weird feeling where um, you kind of know like you like you know your capabilities and, and what you what you deserve for yourself, but at the same time, like not everybody else knows. So it's a lot of time and effort, working hard, trying to catch up and and, and prove people wrong and show people who you really are, and, and it, it's a it's it's a grind for sure. So it's a grind. Um, it's a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of negatives. Like very few positives that 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 will, I guess, um, show itself when it when you start to develop and you start to uh, to get where you need to go. You know, it's it's very like you'll get have really good days, but you'll have a lot more bad days because you have to overcome a lot of stuff. So. 
Do, do you kind of feel like, you know, uh, making the roster and everything, do you feel like you kind of like hit that mountaintop and, you know, we're kind of like enjoying the view for a second or you're still so like caught up in it that it's like, nah, there's more work to do. I got to stay focused. I got to keep on it. That kind of, that kind of stuff. Not even going to lie, man. Like I still don't even feel like I made it yet. You know what I mean? Like I'm here, I've, I've, I've been on a team. I played five games. Um, we got a, 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 a good amount of snaps every game, but it's like uh, you ne- never satisfy. You like, for example, like, all that time I spent here working through training camp and stuff like that, really uh, all that stuff, uh, it was worth it for one day when you find out you make that 53 man and then you right back to work. So yeah. like you never really satisfied and you never really like think you ever really made it um, in my eyes. So, and that's kind of been my whole like cycle shoot since uh, really since I've been playing uh, football. So cycles, it's like, you work, you work, you work, you get like that day of like satisfaction, like, okay, I did it, and you right back to work. So I mean, Troy, it's I mean, your journey's incredible, man. And I listen, I like and I don't just say this, but I mean, when Troy was one of the best teammates I had in, in all sports, man. Like Troy was one of my best friends on the team. Um, you know, walked on, had the same kind of underdog route. Obviously, he did a little bit more than I did with his uh with his career, but like, like he said, man, of course his answer is going to be that he's not satisfied because you don't accomplish everything he's already accomplished. If he ever was satisfied and he sure as hell isn't going to be satisfied now, like uh, sky's the limit for Troy, but Troy chemistry um, with running back Pierce, man, uh, both rookies, I, he's in the offensive rookie of the year conversation. Uh, I, in my opinion, and what is your chemistry with him? Like, and obviously, I mean, you're lead blocking a lot of time for him and he's had a great start to this year. You guys, are you guys like best buds? You guys get along really well, or or is how is that clicking? Yeah, that that's my boy. Like we we get made fun of a little bit because uh, we always like tied at the hip. We always with each other. We eat together. We walk around. We joke together. All that stuff. I hang out with him after the games. I go to his crib. He come to my crib. Like Pierce is my boy, and it, it it makes it a little bit, I guess, in a way, a little bit easier to block for someone that you really have love for. You know what I mean? Sure. Like. That you that you really almost consider like family. Like um, Pierce is probably one of the nicest, uh, outgoing, kind people you'll ever meet in your life. One of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. Um, and he's just very likable. Just a very likable dude. And it it shows not only with like with me, but if if you watch like all our teammates, like all the online, like they 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 blocking them for a purpose. Like they blocking for someone who. You know what I mean? That that they vibe with, that they that they can kick it with, that they can talk. That's very like, you know, that just fire everybody up. That give everybody energy. So, for um, sure, great dude, man. Like that's that's my boy. Like me and him tied it to hip. So that's awesome. And so you mentioned, you know, uh, obviously playing full back, full black. Oh my gosh, full back and being a, <laughs> a lead blocker. And uh, you know, you were actually playing defense in in college. You uh, you were the linebacker, and then you uh, switched to defensive end. You crush it over there. What was that transition like? Uh, going back into that that offensive position and and being able to make that work was that a challenge for you? Or were you able to, to kind of you know make that transition pretty seamlessly? Probably one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life, to be honest with you. Um, offense is a totally different world than defense is. Um, Everything down to the play calling. Like, for example, at Central, we ran whatever, and and you know we would get the the call would be like a like the front then the coverage. It'd be like over four. You already know what to do, right? Yeah. You, got, you maybe if you if I like when I played defensive end, I had to line up in a six nine or a five technique, and I either had to spill or hammer, and I can just go. I just had to know when to pass rush and uh, when to run when to uh, set the edge for the run. When it came to playing offense, the play calling is totally different. It's a mouthful, and you got to listen for specific parts for your part. Um, what you're doing on this formation, when you're shifting, when you're supposed to – like, you, you can have one play but have multiple different formations because we're trying to figure out what the defense is doing. So um, that's tough. Learning how to block someone who's trying to get away from you instead of somebody coming at you and you're trying to get around them, that's totally different. Learning how to use your hands to connect and stay attached rather than separate as a defensive end is totally different. Like it's just, it's a whole new world. And I feel like I came here 
and had to ho- learn a whole new, uh, I guess, put a whole new set of tools in my toolbox. So sure. is, is that what they kind of had in mind for you when, when they uh, picked you up or did that kind of, you know, come out during training camp? You guys kind of had to like, like tinker with some things to kind of figure out where, where your best fit was and your highest value was for the team. I think, well, during my process, a lot of teams looked at me at fullback. Um, I know the Texans specifically, um, I think what I think what it was is they wanted me for special teams. And so they needed to find a place for me to fit so that I could play special teams. Um, Cause I actually started here as a linebacker and then they moved me. So. Um, Troy, Troy's a special teams demon, John. <laughs> I try to be, I try to be that. It's, that special it's all teams, effort, right? It, I mean, that, it's effort and he's so like, he can do so many different things. He can block, he can tackle, he's fast, he's quick, he's strong. Like, he's like a hybrid of everything you want in a special teams guy. And so he's able to do a lot of different, like he did this at, at central. That's kind of how he made his name known at central early on. He just was dominant on special teams. And it's so funny because you get to the, the highest level, you go from college and then all of a sudden you go to the highest level. And it's like, it just starts all over. It's like the same thing. It's like, you're a nobody again. You got to earn it on special teams. Troy, I'm, I can guarantee you that's probably, I mean, I, I haven't been there, but I know you probably went in as a special teams guy and like turned heads instantly. And then they're like, okay, we got to find a spot for this guy. Yeah, you're hundred percent right. Cause the, the special teams coach is, is building a team. Like he, he looking for, for very like talented dudes to build his special teams. Like this guy is really smart. He's a young dude, real cool. Like that's what he do. So like, I, I he'll show me film of certain players around the league and he'll be like, um, I want you to be able to do this. I want you to start watching this guy because we're going to make you this. We're going to do this. So um, he he had these guys have a vision of what they want you to be. And it's, it's mostly really up to you if you want to take that coaching and become what they see in you. So, Troy, you um, I mean, we talk about this transition from uh, defense to offense, but you in high school, John, if you want to pull up this picture. In high school, you played both O and D, but we have this picture. Do you remember this moment here? <laughs> yeah, I do. Because that right there, standing up with the ankle brace <laughs> and, the, and the play call right thing on his wrist is Troy. <laughs> and this this little young stud here with the ball was <laughs> me. And I remember this play because I caught a dig route over the middle and I got popped. Yeah. All of a, all of a, it was Troy who popped me. And all of a sudden I had like six guys around me and I remember just like, holy, like, <laughs> and I didn't know Troy that well at this point in time. Like I was, he was just someone we played against. And then he went right. to central the, the following year. I went to central and I was like, dude, do you remember? Like, I remember you because of this, you know, bro. Do you know that play is still on my high school highlight tape on Huddle? I bet it is. It oh, I, on high, high school highlight tape of you rocking Mark. That's he, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> him, him and somebody else. I think don't even think the other dude got the ball, but Mark caught the ball and kept the ball. Like other dude didn't catch that ball. Yeah, so. I mean, I, I, so I had to do some digging to find that Troy, but like I just, rem- I remember that play, and I was like, I have to have a picture somewhere because, <laughs> I mean, it, it's just so funny how small the world is, man. I mean, play against Troy, didn't even know him, just kind of viewed him as an opponent, and then we become teammates a year later. And then, you know, it's just so crazy to see Troy goes on and, and is done, doing everything he's doing. And it's just like small world, man. Small, small world. world. But, it, but it, you played O and D, right? At, yeah. In high school. So that, I mean, did that, does that help you at all? Just having a little bit of a background understanding? Because I think you were, you played some fullback and stuff for them. Obviously not as much in college. I think you did a little bit of fullback stuff early on just in like power situations. But yeah, I oh, mean, that's great. Um. High, high school, I'm not going to lie. I feel like a lot of kids get this in high school. Um, you don't really know football in high school. So yeah. you, there's really, other than, you know, what little you can really take and soak in from high school, that transition to high school and college is tough because that's when you get to really know ball. You know what I mean? So it, it, it didn't really help me too much, um, that transition, even playing in high school, because they just go get that guy. And that's what I would do or we're going to run yeah. power down the middle. You need to, we need to convert on this third down. You know what I mean? Whereas in college or NFL, like it's a totally different ball game. It's a totally different ball game. It's, it's thinking and physical. It's not just physical like it is in high school. So 
I, I always found it crazy, Troy. And I mean, obviously, I don't know the NFL's. I mean, I know it's another step, but I haven't experienced it like you. The the experience from going from high school, like, you know, the, just the scheme offensively and defensively that we had, and then seeing like what we were doing my first year at Central, it was like learning a different language. Like I didn't know anything. And like, obviously over time you figure it out, but it's just crazy how much more detailed and exact things are and how much more they expect of you to know mentally and going into every single game. Um, and then obviously in the NFL, like Troy's kind of hinted at, it, it's another step, you know, to the, to the highest degree of just like, dude, you have to know every single detail of every single play, your job. If they do this, what do you do? If they do this, what do you do? Like you have to know every scenario. And, um, obviously Troy is, is, is picking it up and, and learning it. But like he said, I mean, it's tough, definitely tough. Yeah, it's, it's real, man. It's real. Like. Like, even as a fullback, I have to know, like, tight end's job just in case something happens. Or, right. like, sometimes they'll switch up the personnel and I have to go in for a tight end. So, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty crazy. I've learned I'm – pretty, I'm pretty good on my job. I'm trying to learn all the blocking schemes, uh, when, when people are pulling, all types of stuff like that. So, that gives you another level of the game. Um, so, you, you can kind of predict what's going to happen during the game in a way. Um, or during a specific play um, when you're in there. But, yeah, it's, it's levels, and it's crazy. Like, like Mark hit it right on the like, head. Like, going from high school to college, you don't know anything. Like, I played defense, like, mainly defense in high school for four years. I got to college and didn't know anything, like, as a linebacker. So, um, definitely, like, a foreign language. Yeah, and I, I assume, like, for the most part, that's just kind of, like, the expectation with all players, right? Like, there's there's no such thing as, like, not having a high football IQ. Like, every single guy needs to to be read up and studied up when they when they come to practice. So it's, so you can just come in and actually get in the flow of things rather than, like, figuring out who's doing what. At least that's my assumption. I'm curious what that's like translating on the field. And, you know, when, when mental mistakes do happen, how are those, you know, handled by coaches and things like that? I'll put it to you like this. I've never studied more in my life than I have in the NFL. Uh, like, even in school, I didn't study this much. Um, <laughs> like, I swear, man. Like, I'm sitting here. I'm like, if I had put this much effort into school, I might have been a doctor. Like, <laughs> Me and Troy that. had some classes together, and he'd be like, yo, was like, did you do the, uh, did you do the homework? <laughs> <laughs> be like, hey, no, but did you? <laughs> oh, yeah, me and Martin are struggling in there, but. Yeah, I was like, ah, someone did. We'll find someone who knows we'll, it. That's we'll funny. Find someone. But uh, when you make mistakes, it depends. I feel like it depends where you're at in the league. Um, I know guys here, uh, coaches here are not – they're not sweet, but they like – you know, they expect you to know what you're doing. If you don't, we're going to run it back and you'll get it right. Um, if you somebody who consistently mess up, like, it's your job. At the end of the day, like, that's how you have to think about it is it's, it's – it's your job and you got to pay your bills. So like, if you don't do your job, there's somebody behind you that'll do your job for you and take that from you. So um, it's, it's more of that consequence than it is from a coach. If, if, you, if that means anything. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Troy, I, I got a, um, so obviously to get to where you're at, like the physical, like you're talking, we talked a lot about the mental preparation and there's no doubt it, it's extreme. It's, I mean, it's more, more extreme than just about any other professional job you can think of in terms of what they ask you to do mentally week in, week out. But physically, obviously it's the same thing. You have to be physically very gifted and blessed and work your ass off to get to where you're at. I was talking to John before this, uh, about like some of the biggest weight room freaks I, I've been around, like in my life. And I've been around a decent amount of them point at central and just kind of seeing but you were one of the if not the most freakish guy in the weight room like football aside like weight room i'm talking bench press squat like just unbelievable amounts of weight and reps and if you just want to share your 225 rep max i remember i thought i saw a video of it somewhere was just ridiculously like like if you if you were in the combine this year it would have been like you could have pushed for records am i correct in saying that uh, I, I think so. I'm not sure what the record is for Miz, but um, the most I've ever hit on 225 was 34 reps. Um, Which is ridiculous. So I'm not. I'm not sure what the record is for Miz, but uh, that's the most I've ever done. 
And just for, I mean, people who maybe don't know you or, or haven't, you know, heard of you before this podcast, you, you're what, I mean, your size, you're what, you're six, one, six, six, one, six, two. And how much are you weighing right now? Well, according to the NFL, I'm five eleven. So there's five eleven. <laughs> but uh, in that in that picture, you're taller than me, and I'm five eleven. Yeah, so that tells you what the NFL how they measure people. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, and what was the other question? Um, the other one was, what did I, what did I say, John? Just so, just what you're weighing in at. Uh, oh at yeah, that what you, yeah, your size. Just so people understand how impressive that is. Oh, I'm I'm two forty two right now. So 242, about 5'11", 6 foot, and he's able to do 34 reps at 225. And then, I mean, obviously, Troy doesn't do that by accident. He works his butt off in the gym. Um, but it, is the training, for like, that you've been doing since we were at Central into now physical training? Like, is it is it similar for the most part? Is it more of, like, trying to protect you and, and keep you healthy? Or are you still doing, like, freakish workouts like I used to see you do where I'm like, oh, my God, like, He's, he's either going to hurt himself or he's going to become a monster. <laughs> um, it's uh, about 25% of what I used to do at Central. I still do here. Um, okay. uh, it depends. It also depends on the timing, what time of year you are. And, you know, uh, as far as like, like bench press and stuff like that, I'll still do high weight. Like I'll still do a lot of weight, but everything's more focused on explosion and, yeah. you know, um, work, being safe and, and preventing injuries and stuff like that. Um, they they got a lot more equipment here. So, like, I get to do different things to to cater to things that I want to do. Um, and they, they do a phenomenal job with, uh, with recovery. Like, that's more of an emphasis now in my lifting is recovery and rolling out, uh, body work. All that stuff is, is way more emphasized than it was at Central. You know what I mean? As in college, they just want to throw you out there. As long as you can play, you can play. Like it's just yeah. it's the league. Um, they got a lot more knowledge. They, you'll get one-on-one -on -one attention. So um, about twenty-five percent is I, I still do a little bit of weight, but I don't. I don't max out no more. I don't. I don't go to my highest no more. Like I, I'll stay around. Like if I'm benching, I'll stay around that three fifty range. That light Troy, weight. <laughs> Troy, what's the, what is the uh what is the most you've ever single single rep maxed on bench? Uh I think like 460. It's unbelievable. Dude, I John and I probably couldn't together squat 460. Like if you had a bar long enough for both you and I, John. My my uh my one rep max in high school was was four fifteen and I felt okay, really good. So about maybe you that. Could. so, so maybe Troy's you could. got me feeling real small right now. So <laughs> <laughs> um That's Troy, another another quick question for you. Uh is Davis Mills as tall in person as he seems and is his neck as long in person as it seems <laughs> like <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> he he is like in all seriousness, like he is, I think one of the more special talents, um, one of the more underrated talents in the league, like for guys that kind of are under, like he was obviously hyped up big time coming out of high school was a high, you know, highly rated recruit, but kind of an underdog in when he got put into the league. And I, you know, I think he's starting to come into his own and obviously like Troy was texting me before this, giving me crap because, you know, we've picked the Texans to lose on this podcast a few times, but we owe you an um, apology for that. For, for obviously, last week, obviously <laughs> we were wrong. They, they're they coming off of a big win and, and um, Mills is starting to put it together. And obviously they have a strong running game behind Troy and, and Pierce and they're starting to find their rhythm and they're going into their bye week But Troy, for you and for this team, I mean, what, what is the goal here for you guys this year to, to, um, you know, obviously, it's still early on and you guys have been in every game you've played in, but I mean, you guys believe as a team and obviously you believe in yourself, but what, what is the goal for you like this year individually? And then obviously as, as a team, what, what's the talk going around? Uh, what, what do you guys believe that you guys can do? Man, I, I feel like my, my goal individually matches up with what the team want and what we all want, because that's just the type of culture and, and the, the type of things that we're building here is that we just want to win. Like we just, we want to be able to compete and win like in, in every game, just like any other NFL team wants to do. Everybody wants to win. We, we want to win. We believe we can win. We believe we have all the pieces to win. Um, we, we're, we're obviously in a, a, a building state. Um, we got a lot of young talent. We got a lot of vets that have crazy talent. We have like 
we have a lot of talent on our team, but we 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 want to win. We was we want to uh, be able to compete with everybody in this league. So not, I really believe we can do that, regardless of what our records say. Shoot, we've been in every game. Every game has been at least a one score yeah. game. So, um, we we just uh, <laughs> I guess we just want to win. That's that's all it is. That's all it is to it. At the end of the day, we just want to come out come out on top on that scoreboard. So. Simple yeah, goal, you, man. Simple you guys goal. got a young quarterback, and you know this is the f- first year with uh with Lovey Smith as head coach. And uh, you know from what I've noticed, like a lot of these you know, young teams kind of getting new system, new coaches in place, they look totally different coming out of their bye week. So uh, hopefully that's what happens for the Texans, and and you guys go and do that, and uh, you know start taking some names. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Yeah, man. They've already started to with a, a win last week. Yeah. Troy, um. One last question that I have, and then, John, if you have any more or if there's anything else, Troy, you want to talk about, we obviously can. But in terms of, like, obviously, like, it's so different going from playing in the MAC. There's obviously some really good talent in the MAC. But when you get to the NFL, I mean, every you're going against freaks of nature. Uh, you're preparing for them. You're watching them on film. In, in your eyes, from your early on career, I mean, you've, you've, it's just five games, right? Like, it's kind of a short sample. But who is, like – in terms of guys you've had to prepare for, whether it's on O or D or just anybody, a special teams guy, anybody that you've watched on film, it's like the biggest freak of nature. Like, like, like you've, you're seeing things you've never seen before. And this guy do like, is there one guy in particular that just stands out? Like this guy is ridiculously good. He makes really good people look bad. Like what, like, is there anybody that comes to, comes to mind first? Yeah. I, I got a couple of people, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a answer that question with a story. Okay. Okay. So what week did we play the Chargers? This was the I think week wanna, three. No, la, it was last week, week four. Week four. It was we played Chargers last week. Yeah, it was week four. Yeah. Wow, that went by fast. Okay. So we we playing the Chargers, right? We're getting ready for the Chargers. You know, you do your game plan for the week or whatever, and you get ready, you know who you're about to play against. So we uh game starts and we on offense whenever that is, and they call out my personnel, right? So I go out there, and we, we call a play where I line up in, this, uh, in like, a wing set, and uh, I go and, you know, do what I do for Pierce. I block. I got to be vague because I don't want to give stuff away. <laughs> of course. Um, so I go out there. I run out to the huddle. They call the play. Uh, I line up, and I'm standing in a wing position, and I – Get in a two point stance, and I look up, and I see this gigantic, big buff defensive end uh, with number fifty two. Uh, you know who that is, right? Yeah, Khalil Mack. <laughs> so, <laughs> Khalil Mack is my hero. Like I love Khalil. Like I watched him in in college all the time. Him, James Harrison. Like I played defensive end. Like I learned a lot. Just watching Khalil Mack play. All uh, Mack guys, best, by the way. One of my best moves was a long arm, and Khalil Mack got a nasty long arm. Especially, I saw one that he did on. I can't. I won't want to say no name. So it, it's it's whatever. So I look up and I'm like, I'm in awe. Like that's the that's one of the first times I've ever been starstruck. So I look up and I see it's Khalil Mack, and I realize it's Khalil Mack. So we run the play or whatever, run it. I go to the sideline and I realize who I just saw. So I'm kind of like looking and watching him throughout the game every now and then whenever I can. And this dude is a monster. Like he gets off the ball, he's strong, and he's smart. Like he, sometimes like we, we ran a specific play in the game that he would call out and he would try to adjust for it. Like it, it was just, he would just was, he would know it's coming. He he would know it's coming. Like he literally would yell out the play and then adjust for it. So Khalil Mack probably is the person I've been most in awe of that I played against. That I'm like, like you have, like you see stuff that he do on film, and you see stuff he do on TV, and it's like, okay, he's a dog, he's pretty cool, but ain't nothing <laughs> like seeing it in person. First hand, man. First hand. Yeah, not just seeing it in person, but having to block in person. That, yeah. that sounds like that would be a tough job for sure. <laughs> for man, sure, man, what? What? That dude is. That dude was a freak of nature. So, um, Khalil Mack probably was one of the one of those dudes that fit that category. Like, and that was that was that's one moment I'll remember for the rest of my life. Like, 
because for sure like, you really like real life met one of my heroes like it's, it's crazy so that's incredible um one last question for you uh just be and this is kind of a question for you and mark but man central michigan just really seems to be a hub for nfl talent and i've said this on the podcast before i don't know if there's you know any school that's like central michigan's caliber that has produced as much nfl talent what what do you think it is right is are they putting something in the water over there like are you guys like pra- practicing some witchcraft or something or like it's just some it's super crazy to me and i'd love to hear an explanation it's funny cuz i had a conversation with somebody on my team that was in the mac like you get plenty of talent from the mac general in the nfl um but what i think it is is you get these schools in the mac like central who offer dudes who really have no offers and central may be their only offer um, or that may have a couple uh, D2 offers and Central might be their only D1 offer. And those dudes just come to, or walk-ons, for example. And those, those dudes just come to Central hungry, like hungry and re- ready to work. And it's just, we see who, who's gone to the league before us and that just like motivates us. You know what I mean? Like, like, I, like I've been on a team with Tyler Conklin, who's uh, currently with, Jets, I believe. Yeah. Um, Sean Murphy Bunting. Uh, Joey O played. Joey O was like my mentor. So Joey O played for the Eagles for like three or four years. Yeah. Um, Mike Dana currently plays for uh, the Chiefs. Um, just a whole lot of talent. Belor, Belor is a big special teams dude. Like, that's one of my favorite players to watch on, on film. So. Um, when it, he's when made I, a career. I mean, Nick Ballor has made a career out of special teams, man. Like career, and he's a career. Like, he's like a he's a special teams example. Like people, sh- I'm sure Troy watches film of him and like, hey, this is the standard. Like this is what we want you to be. Oh yeah, yeah. You don't you don't really understand how good he is until you watch his film. How smart and how vet savvy he is. Um, you just get a lot of like you get you see dudes who make it before you, and when you somebody who a player that that's like an underdog, like there's just. It just, I don't know, it's just a, there's like a CMU pipeline that just, you go there and you just, you ball and you do what you got to do and it takes you where you want to go, so. Yeah, I mean, to piggyback off that, like Troy named some some names, that, I mean, those are like all kind of guys that were underdogs. A lot of those guys were walk-ons. A lot of those guys were, I mean, no star recruits that came in and earned everything. And then, you, I mean, like Antonio Brown's one of the biggest names in football has come out of Central. Yeah, J.J. Watt was at Central. Cooper Rush is starting for America's team. Like, I mean, the list just goes on and on of guys. I mean, we've had a number one overall draft pick with Eric Fisher. Like, you know, I, John joked before Troy came on, like, there must be something in the water in Mount Pleasant. But it's like, I mean, a lot of talent has come out of Central Michigan. I think it just goes with, like, the coaches that we have had there um, understand how to develop players, especially, like, you know, strength and conditioning. They get you physically prepared and then you're mentally ready to go because you've, you know, you've done it for four years at a high level and, and the Mac has some good football, man. And, um, you know, day in, day out at practice, like Troy's going against some really good guys that mentored him. And I had guys ahead of me that mentored me. And it just like brings guys to a point where like, yeah, if you have the physical God given ability to make it, you're mentally ready because you're at a spot where guys have done it. And I think when you're around guys that have done it, it gives you more belief in yourself. And like, you just kind of follow the same path as the guys ahead of you. And uh, Troy is just another name that we, you add to that list. That is like guys that have made it underdog mentality going through central Michigan. And uh, you know, he kind of hit it right on the head. Like there's a lot of them out there and it's something, something to be proud of if you're, if you're a chip fan. Another another thing too, which I, I just realized is a lot of dudes go through position changes and accept them and end up making it. Like, for example, yeah. Bernard, shout out to Bernard and Luke Gadecki. Like, yeah, both of those dudes, uh, I think Luke was a tight end at first and moved to tackle. Yep. And Walked so on. Bernard, Bernard was a tight end that got moved to tackle. Yeah. So, um, and both of those dudes are, you know, in the league, got Started. drafted. Yeah. Like, those dudes made you better every day. I want to go against those dudes every day every day and those dudes we all made each other better so it's crazy kp kp wasn't position change but kp had that mentality that like and and when i got to the league that was one of the first things i thought like kp um khalil pimpleton was way ahead of his time when it came to his mentality and how he worked and how he took care of himself and how he 
just how he trained, like, that dude had an NFL mentality in college and made all his teammates better. So Another one of those guys, and I, Troy would agree, another, like, one of those guys is, like, one of the best teammates that Troy and I have ever had in any sport ever, like, since we were kids to, to even to now. Like, Khalil was conta- contagiously happy, contagiously energetic, contagiously just, like, one of the hardest working guys. And you pair that with someone who's hungry, you know, like Troy, and you pair that with someone who's hungry like KP, and they push each other and compete and bring the best out of each other. Like, the product is you get two guys that are living their dream, man, and, and just continuing to – um chase more and more and are never satisfied and uh like i I I even got a taste of that with with uh with hard knocks just seeing like just that energy that he had i mean even you know all those trials and tribulations that he was going through with with uh training camp and then obviously like not you know making the cut and then going to the giants and stuff and that entire time his mentality was like this is a blessing to be here i'm lucky to be here i'm just gonna work my ass off and see what happens and and it did work out for him and i'm, I'm very stoked for him that he was able to you know find a home somewhere and, and you know keep the dream alive so look th- that's the crazy thing about hard knocks too is that that's who kp really is like some yeah. people put front for whatever on tv i'm not saying anybody's doing that but you know t- you know how tv is entertainment is yeah. uh sometimes people put on the front you know what i mean even famous artists who make music they have like two different sides of them like kp how he was how he acts in um how he is in uh in hard knocks that's actually how he really is in person like that is the most raw form of kp that dude is very grateful very happy love ball he worked hard. Like he, he, he just, he, that dude was a baller and he, he's going to go very far. So shout out. Did he juggle him. for you guys at central? No, <laughs> he, st- bro, bro, he, he actually, st- he started juggling kind of late. Like, like when KP first got there, like he didn't juggle anything. Like he just came in working hard. And then like, he started to pick up juggling as like, just like as a goal to help him catch the football better. Catch and, that. um, he, he just, like, started to get more and more talented at it. And, of course, like, whatever he puts his mind to, he can probably do physically. He's just that blessed, like, gifted physically. But, yeah, he started, like, juggling and stuff. And, like, he would just do that stuff with people. And he would, like, we had teammates like Troy, like Troy Brown, one of our teammates. Like, he started to do some juggling stuff. He's playing at Ole Miss now. Like, he would, like, get guys to, like, try things and, like, hey, this can make you better. And people would, like, want to do it because KP's doing it. He's working his ass off. Like, he's doing things you never think of doing to get yeah. better and then he would have guys like i tried juggling dude like i've never juggled in my life i've always been confident in my hands i was like i don't have to juggle like I, I catch like i'm confident in my hands and he's like no man he's like this will make you even more confident i was like okay i'll try juggling and i couldn't do it but yeah that that talent show that's really like that's something he practiced to get better at football and it just so happened that it been to the little rookie talent show you know yeah, like he's not doing that for show like he's doing that like because he did that in the beginning stages like he started to juggle. He wanted to get better at catching the football. Like that was his thing. So he started juggling and then like, he just got so good at it and it happened to be a skill he picked up and they're like, Hey, do you have a skill for the talent show? He's like, Oh, I guess I'll juggle. Right. Cause he was like, hell no, I'm not singing. Um, but yeah, I mean, Troy hit it spot on. Like that's kind of the culture to kind of end your question, John, like the culture at CMU is, is that kind of thing. And, uh, when you mix the right guys with the right coaches and you work hard every single day for four or five years, like, you have a chance to do what Troy's doing and, and, and make it. And, and then it's just a, con- a matter of consistently doing that. And John and I are excited to have, you know, Troy here talking with us and sharing kind of some of the insight on that. And um, Troy, former teammate, really good friend of yours, proud of you, man. And um, hope to have you on again throughout the year, going into the bye week, um, get some, get some rest a little bit. And then hopefully see the Houston Texans continue this win streak. Um, yeah, I'll be looking out for you uh, uh, blocking against the Raiders coming up here. I'm excited for that. Also, uh, what's, what's your favorite juice song to listen to pregame before we let you go? Oh, Mike told you. I did. Uh, I told <laughs> Man, look, that that dude is so talented. Like, he he has so many unreleased songs, man. I'll listen to everything he put out. He just – he got some, some new unreleased leaked songs that I've just been listening to, like – I can't even say the names of them. They're not even friendly. I got to protect that NFL shield. <laughs> um, <laughs> protect the shield at all costs, bro. At I love all it. costs, man. That's my at job. All costs. I love it. Thanks so much for coming on, Troy. We'll see you later. Thank you for having me. I'll see you. Thanks, Troy. Of course. Thanks, Troy. Peace.
So that, that was, was awesome. Uh, that was awesome, man. That again, guys, who are you know people listening? That's Troy Harrison. Uh, we we're glad to have him on there. Really good friend of mine, teammate for four years at Central. Me and John played against him in high school, just coincidentally. But awesome dude, awesome player, and uh, kind of a cool insight into what it's like to be a rookie who was an undrafted guy and and just kind of had had to scratch and claw for everything he's got, and he's. He's starting at fullback for the Texans, man, with a good running game and, and and doing really well. It's been exciting as a former teammate of his to see him do that. And uh, when I say there's not people out there that deserve it more than he does, I don't just say that. Like, I mean it. He's he's earned the right to be in that spot, and he continues to earn it. Um, happy for that guy. And I got to be real, man. Like, the, the AFC South is wide open, too. And that Texans team, you know, with young talent like Troy that are just there to, to work, get better every single day, like – those are the kind of guys that you want on your team to actually make something happen when, you know, kind of feels like the world's against you, but like, Hey, you know, Texans, I think they, they found a blessing and in, in having Dougie Mills on the team. Right. I mean, he's, you know, I don't think they were expecting to really have like a, a quarterback that could kind of be the guy over there uh, moving off of Deshaun Watson, like they did. So that's yeah. great. You know, like you said, their running game looks really strong, really good. Like they definitely have potential and, you know, their their divisional competition isn't great. So they could definitely make something happen. That's super exciting. All right, Mark. Um, you know, I know this is slightly old news just because of kind of how our release schedule goes, but uh, Colts Broncos. Boring, boring, boring. <laughs> The most boring football game I've ever... And, like, this has been our joke since pretty much week one with Denver, right? Like, you're going to watch Denver. It's going to be a snooze fest. You're going to want to fall asleep. I, I questioned Danny Morehouse, our guest on it, directly about how boring they are. And now it's like, man, they're so boring that they're losing games to the Colts, who are just not a good team. And it's like, to me, like, okay, I think the Seahawks won that trade. <laughs> all sorts of draft capital have a you know the same record as the Broncos currently didn't have to pay Russ 230 million and this dude didn't score a touchdown <laughs> well I mean obviously like we've talked on previous episodes the struggling offense struggling new coach new quarterback you know the players clearly I mean the good thing about watching Denver in prime time is it's hilarious to see them struggle you know um because again, we make fun of Russ Wilson all the time. Nice guy, total cornball. And you can see his teammates, like when you're a cornball and you do things the way that Russell Wilson does and things aren't going well, you can kind of see the teammates looking at him like, we don't like you. And all of this corny stuff you're doing isn't working and you better stop because it makes him want to punch you in the face. Like Melvin Gordon a few times, like was caught on camera. Like giving him kind of like a cockeyed like, look. look. Yeah, yeah, like I've seen some memes like that are pretty funny. Uh, you know, of him like looking at Russell Wilson, like, dude, like, we need to figure it out. And uh, the simple thing is, both those teams are struggling, and both those teams deserve to lose that game. I was hoping to end in a tie because that would be hilarious. Um, that would have been torture, <laughs> but it's like, you know, both those teams are struggling, and and, and um, one of them's got to figure it out. But man, the Broncos, like, just and they keep putting them in prime time. I think they have another two or three prime no. time games, like, no. shortly. Yeah. No. yeah it, they 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 own the primetime <laughs> slot with Russ Wilson and it's like it's I'd rather watch paint dry. And like honestly, like uh, you know, per that that comment, like the uh, you know this is no joke, right? The the Broncos gave a large chunk of their entire franchise away to go get you a lot of draft picks, a lot of decent players, right? I mean, they they gave more than uh, Drew Locke away, right? I, I can't remember. Uh, they gave a cu couple other players to the Seahawks uh, along with that trade. And then a huge amount of cap space. What's the expectation? You are going to be the guy, right? But instead, people are making memes about Let's Ride. They're making memes about your, your Subway commercial. They're making memes about you high five in the air when you come out of the tunnel. And your teammates see that shit. They see right through that shit. And it's it's definitely not a good look. I'm curious to see, you know, if the Broncos are able to turn it around, if they're able to get a little bit of offense going. Because otherwise, I mean, you know, they have fans leaving going into halftime. So they're like, nah, I'm done with this. I'd rather go home and get some sleep for my shift tomorrow on Friday than see how this game concludes. Like, booing them, not a good look. Not a good look. And they have a hard schedule. And, they, you know, it's... Not a good look. I'd be worried if I'm a Denver Broncos fan, and I'm sure Danny is regretting some of the things he said when we, we brought him on a few weeks ago as a guest. But, um, you know, there's other teams that are 
around the league that are struggling too. If we go into the the morning game in in London, um, the Packers, man, we've mentioned it before, uh, like they just aren't clicking, you know. And I'm waiting for that that game, that moment where it's like, okay, Rodgers has these guys buzzing, the chemistry's there. I'm waiting for him to have one of those those plays. It's like, oh, he's really figured out this guy, and and these guys are starting to figure it out in practice and. The young guys are figuring out what Rodgers likes to do and his audibles and where he puts the ball in certain plays. And it's like, I'm waiting for that to happen. And they're, I mean, they lose to the Giants. I don't know like if the Giants are good or if they just keep finding ways to win because they're hungry and, you know, they have a new coach and there's, there's just a different culture around them right now. Or if the Packers are just struggling because, I mean, I, I can't yeah, it, It's it probably out. a healthy mix of both. And I, like, I'm still pretty convinced that the Giants really like, I don't think they should be a four and one team. And I don't think their record is going to, you know, have that same ratio by the end of the season. Um, but I do think they definitely played better football than the Packers. And, you know, it's like, to me, I, I think swinging big on free agents is like a silly thing. And it's like a reckless thing to do a lot of the time, but like, I think Rogers could really, really, really benefit from having OBJ on that team right now. So whenever agree, he's man. healthy and ready to come back, I genuinely think he's worth paying for because like Rogers doesn't work well with rookies. We know this and you know, Watson and Dobbs have been doing okay, but like you can see that he has trust issues with them. You see the body language, the eye rolling, the things like that. He has issues with it. Can't have that. Right. And I think he would rather be thrown to, you know, uh, Cobb Watkins and OBJ. I think he'd feel a lot better about that receiver core. So yeah. we'll see. I mean, you know, they got time to figure it out, but it's, it's definitely not the same Packers that we're used to. And, uh, you know, they're lucky that they have a defense as rock solid as it is because offense right. is definitely struggling to figure it out. And I, and I keep saying it, I keep saying it when they do figure it out, because I think inevitably with the coaching staff they have with Rodgers and with that defense, like when they do figure it out offensively, they are going to be a team that can compete in the NFC. I, I really believe that. And it's just a matter of when, you know, and if they can survive, no through a, they'll, yeah. they'll survive through a bad division. I mean, they play the Lions, they play the, you know, the Bears. Those are, you know, those are games they are going to win. It, it's so they'll survive. They'll be a playoff team. It's like if they can figure it out and, and get this stuff clicking, Sooner than later, they are a team uh, that's a threat. Speaking of team that's a, a threat, the Buffalo Bills. Dominance, dude. Dominance. 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 And it's a, it's a mix of, yeah, the Steelers are bad, and Kenny Pickett is probably you know not ready to start yet in the league. But Josh Allen, man, come out firing. 98-yard touchdown. Another 60-yard touchdown to Gabe Davis later on. Just putting the ball in spots like – like when he throws the ball on these deep play action passes, it looks like he's, it's a rocket launcher. Like it comes off of his hand and is flying and it lands right where it needs to land every time. I mean, he, he is, I, I've watched a lot of football. This guy is so special. He's so special. And you can talk about all the other quarterbacks around the league of what they're doing. And Mahomes is awesome. And, you know, uh, Herbert's awesome. And Tom Brady's been great his whole career. And Aaron Rodgers makes great throws. And there's, all, you know, there's all that stuff, but Josh Allen's doing things. I'm telling you consistently where it's like, this guy is one of the best I've ever seen play the sport. I completely and, agree with you, but I do have to poke fun about the fact that you are just absolutely in love with Josh Allen and the Buffalo. Dude, Bills. How can you not? You are, love Josh. you are delusionally in love. You are like, like it's not delusion. High school sweetheart. Like just it's absolutely in love this guy, with the Buffalo. Listen, Bills. this guy <laughs> is special. All right. He He's is special. And he's, uh, like I said, he's doing things we've never seen before. And I mean, I saw an early glimpse of it and, and Troy, if he was still on here, like we played against him in that bowl game in the Idaho potato bowl when he was at Wyoming. And I was like, we went bowling with him like the day before as one of the team events. And he was like bowling, throwing strikes. Just of course he's freakishly gifted at everything he does. Um, but then like, I'm like, this guy is, he doesn't look that good. He's a big guy. He looks kind of gumpy. We're going to beat him. And we go out there and he absolutely torched us, torched us. And he, he's sneaky athletic. I mean, he, he doesn't look the part like when you're standing next to him, he's just a big dude and he kind of looks almost sloppy, but like, he's a freak, man. He, he can, he just makes every throw. He can run. He runs you over, jumps over people, stiff arm, throws on the run, throws in the pocket. Like he does everything for the bills. And I'm telling you, I really don't know if they're going to lose another game. I, I am hoping to God that we get a, another Casey Bills uh, rematch. And I'm hoping that the brackets work out where that's the AFC championship. Well, you know, because they play that, you know, they play this week, right? This coming week. 
Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. I didn't know that. And that's, that's yeah. super exciting. So you got your wish. <laughs> right. You got well, I'm, I'm saying, I hope they meet in the playoffs. Yeah, I agree. And I think, I, yeah, there's a good chance that happens, but yeah, they yeah. play this week and it's going to be electric. I cannot um, wait for that. But, um, moving on to Chargers Browns. That was a great game. Just, okay. By the way, I have Eckler and Chubb on uh, so one of my fantasy leagues and that was so that was a good day just watching both of these teams have what seems like just infinite run game cannot be stopped it was amazing thank you for the 60 combined fantasy points Eckler and Chubb really appreciate you guys F- fun explosive game to watch it was cool well yeah I agree with you I I'm um, a huge coaching thing it's weird and I always listen you're gonna hear me hate on the Lions coaching decisions and stuff but like Brand Staley and the coaching decisions that he sometimes makes for the Chargers blow my mind. I don't know if you saw this, John. They had the ball. Okay. The final score you see is 30 28. They had the ball up 30 to 28. It was fourth and two at midfield. And the Chargers, with a minute left, went for it and didn't get it and gave the Browns the ball at midfield up only two. So a field goal wins the game for Cleveland. And they gave him the ball at midfield because he chose, like, it's just like stuff that you don't see coaches ever do. And listen, I'm like prides himself in like being like Mr. Statistics guy statistics. Like there there is no statistics though, that say to to go for it there. I mean, none. I mean, I was not only that, but like context, right? Like even if you are using analytics and statistics to base your decisions, Oh, we're more likely to convert this. Oh, like, you know, that, it's like you gotta understand the context of the game, right? Like punt it away, man. <laughs> punt it, pin them deep, and make a, a backup quarterback drive seventy yards and kick a game winning field goal. It's not hard. I mean, there's a middle left in the game. You have a good defense. Yeah, it's it, you're no, playing it, against it, a run. You're playing against a run first offense. Like the Browns have a good running game, but their passing game is questionable, especially when you know they're passing. Right. So it's like. For, it's a no brainer that they should have punted that, but I just wanted to point that out and get on him a little bit because it's not just Dan Campbell that I attack guys. Okay. I'm not just a Dan Campbell lions hater. I don't like stupid football decisions for coaching because it's just like so preventable. And like, as a coach, you have to put your guys in the best possible scenario to win. And that was terrible because I'm I'm going to skip two games here really quick and also say somebody said the other day, uh, I'm happy I got to see what a game would be like if Dan Campbell coached like Brandon Staley. Well, dude, he he makes the same stupid decisions (laughs) as Brandon Staley. It's just, he doesn't have a super roster. You know, like he doesn't have Justin Herbert at quarterback. Like, yeah, I might be a little more risky as a play caller and decision maker. If I had Mahomes. Herbert, Josh Allen, those guys at quarterback. But you have Goff, who's been okay, but like he's not a guaranteed, like, hey, you're going to get me this first down type of guy. Right. You know what I mean? You don't have a defense behind you that's like, hey, my defense is going to back us up even if we don't get this. You, you're you the Lions. You need to play more conservative. You, you like It doesn't make any sense. But uh, um, Also, that, yeah. that scene with them, I think, what, they lost – they were down to like their seventh and eighth defensive back at some point in that game from injury, which is crazy. And like this, this game was brutal to begin with, but just like seeing every single defensive lion drop like flies. They had, they had Rodrigo out on coverage at one point because apparently didn't know who to put on at corner. <laughs> Dude, listen, it's as simple as this. the lions quite honestly might be the worst team in football. Stop they it. are there. And I'm, I listened to my reasoning. They have shown signs that they can be good on offense, right? They come into this week, they were the number one offense. And they're still the number three offense scoring zero they points. got shut out this week, John, in the NFL. They which did. Which is hard to do. They went 0 for 6 on fourth down. They Brutal. handed a third string rookie quarterback in his first career start every opportunity to have safe, comfortable field position. Never put him in pressure situations, which is all you have to do against a new guy and make them a little bit under pressure. But we gave them, and we gave Belichick exactly what what he wanted. It was a safe, secure, field position battle game. Gave him a defensive touchdown going for it on fourth and nine. I mean, I I, I did I, I went on my rant. I did my post-game Lions rant. If you haven't seen it, go check it out on our social I'm sure we're going to get one of those every single week at this point. Dude, so, I'm, I mean, I don't want to do it. I don't want to have to do it. But when I when I see what I see, and like it's like I have to do it. because. Until okay, they either... that's fair. Do me a favor, though. I'm, I'm going to try to hold you to this, but I, I guess it's up to you if you want to or not. 
Ne- next time they beat a team with above a 500 record, I need you to like go and you know say, "Oh, Lions did good here. This is what they did right." I'm really happy to see that. I'll agree to that because it won't happen. <laughs> but yeah, I will right. do that. If they beat a team with a 500 record and they do it in a meaningful way and they make a statement. Yeah, I'm going to give them their credit. I want the Lions to do well, but it's just like it's the same thing every week. And this accepting below average play and below average coaching because we think that it's the right fit or it's the right culture, like it's just not working. I mean, the Giants head coach has more wins in the first five games this year in his first year than Dan Campbell has in two seasons. There's no excuse for that. The Lions, the, the Giants don't have a much better roster than we do. You know what I mean? They don't have a, a better culture than we do. He goes in there and is he's four and one in his first five games as, a, as an NFL head coach. And Dan Campbell goes in and, and he has four wins total in two seasons. That's, that's all you need to know, man. Like Joe mentioned this. Shout out to Spangros. He mentioned this in the last episode. In the NFL, with the right hire and the right thing, you can you can turn around a team from three wins to 13 wins like that in the right situation. and. The Lions have the players to do it. I mean, if we had a different coach coaching, definitely our have the right offense now, to do it. Yeah. yeah, and listen, we have some of the defensive and, pieces too, and we our our defensive scheme has been horrible, and we put bad really guys bad. in bad situations, and, and we put our good players in bad situations, and it's not a good fit. So, yeah. and I will remember, say this too: I'm I am pretty satisfied with with how Holmes is drafted. I think that yeah, he's uh, the, not the past two draft classes have been really blame. good. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, so you know, uh, uh, if if Campbell keeps playing like this, obviously his his Detroit his time in Detroit is is limited. I do hope that if they choose to move on from Campbell in the near future, that they do retain Holmes because I am satisfied with how he is drafted, and I think it, he's he's good for the organization. So we'll see how that shakes out. But just yeah. just so you know, two Lions uh, Lions fans uh, and John, if you look at our schedule the next few games, we're not winning those games. So but we're gonna. It's be... a lot tougher. I was thinking this is like kind of where we'd go, you know, three and two, two and three, kind of get some padding going into this it next stretch. It doesn't get yeah, any it gets, easier. It dude. gets brutal. It gets pretty get brutal. Brutal. Um, and I, I mean, if we lose our next game in any fashion close to what happened against New England, well, they have Dallas they have a... next, right? I think Dallas and then Buffalo. Yeah. Well, I mean, we know how Buffalo is going to go. We don't even so... talk about that one. Dallas, I give them like a a twenty percent chance, like because like, like, the you know we talk about matchups, right? Dallas's defense is the best part of their team, and our offensive line, I think, is one of the few that will actually be able to stand up to that defense. But nah, I don't think we'll stand up to them, dude. I I I think we're gonna struggle these next few games, and I I mean I think Dan Campbell's out if we lose the next game and any cl- if we're not competitive in the next game, he he's out. And if we lose the next two or three, even if we are competitive, he's out. Like he he's running out of time. This yeah. game right here was the the tell the tale moment. Like this was should have been the final nail in most coffins, but because we're the Lions, we'll we'll give him another bye week to try to figure it out. I mean, this guy goes into bye week, and some of the stuff this guy's saying like is the same shit that he said last year. You know, it's on me. I got to be better. Like no shit, no <laughs> shit. It's on you, dude. Like obviously, it's on you. Like you went, you're zero for six on fourth down. You're going for it on fourth and nine in field goal range. You're only down six to zero at that time. Like, no shit, it's on you. So many losses over the last two seasons have been on you. And there's the players can be to blame, you know, whatever. People who don't know football will say, oh, well, we don't have a good team. Well, here's the thing. Everybody in the NFL has good teams. And if you have the right coach, you can compete with anybody on any given day. And the Lions have been in many games the last two seasons that were winnable. And, and I think they, they have an incredibly talented roster that they can. They do. They're, they're not, they easily like, have a like 500 this, caliber roster. This is a coaching. This is a co- coaching flaw franchise right now. It's not the players. It used to be the players for a long time, and we've had some coaches come in that are bad, some that are good. Dan Campbell isn't a good coach. And the worst thing of all is we had to watch that fat turd Matt Patricia smile with his pencil in his ear that he never uses that coach against us and go t- win 29 to zero like that dude Brutal. was the worst coach Brutal. ever in Detroit history. Yeah. And I, he, I wanted him out up. basically halfway through the first season. I was not optimistic to start with Patricia. And I also was very, very upset. They fired Caldwell. I still think to this day that Caldwell was the coach that we had the best chance with. And I was very, I mean, 
uh, for those that don't know this, the reason why I follow the Saints as closely as I do is because I was so pissed that we fired Caldwell that I found a different team to start watching on a regular basis over the Lions because I was so upset about that decision that they made. So that's how you guys got the Saints uh, yeah. fan, John. But yeah, like I mean, it's 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 rough. It's super rough being a Lions fan. I know exactly what it's like all of these years of just having hope and then getting your heart ripped out every single season before Thanksgiving most of the time. Like it's it's brutal. Um, yeah. All right, we spent enough time dwelling on how horrible they are. Um, <laughs> Get it, got got to look up those ACT. Uh, you know, I'm holding on to hope that we we don't have to we don't have to do that and we get to six wins. But you know, got I got to be a realist as well. Uh, the odds are not in my favor. Um, Texans Jaguars. We we kind of talked about that a little bit with Troy. It was nice to see them get that win against a divisional rival. Um, I did not watch that game. I I don't know if you did, Mark. I, uh, I saw the uh, I saw a decent amount of it, and you know, shout out to Troy and that, that running game in, in Houston is what's I think keeping them in these games. Uh, mm -hmm. And he's a large part of that. And Pierce has been a stud. I really do think he's an offensive rookie of the year candidate. And the Jags, um, I'm not going to say the Jags are bad after losing to the Texans, because I don't think the Texans are as bad as we previously assumed. I really don't. Um, like Troy said, they've been in a one score game with everyone they've played and they played some good teams. So that's that division, like you said, is wide open. And this is a big win for Houston. Um, and it's, it's going to be a competitive division. Absolutely. Uh, Bears Vikings. I mean, that look that that went pretty much as as we thought it would. I actually thought the Bears hung in there better than than I was expecting them to. I mean, simply put, like the Bears are bad, and I think that our prediction that they they might not win a game in the rest of the season is accurate. Um, I think the Bears will beat the Lions. Stop it. I think the Bears. They will might. Beat the Lions. They might split. I could see them. Splitting. That's what I'm saying. They're going to yeah. at least win one game. And listen, they, they the Bears might. are bad. That's the Bears They're are real really bad. bad, and I think they will get a win over the Lions. Uh, we talked about oh, the Lions game. Down. Yep. But uh, Saints Seahawks, it. it was great to see the Saints finally get a win. Uh, that the, the past few games have absolutely broken my heart. Taysom Hill, man. Look, I don't know like what is up with that dude. I've never seen a guy that just happens to like be so dominant at every position on the offense for whatever reason, but like is like tried out for quarterback didn't really work out i don't think he could play tight end like very well just generally like for whatever reason like the, these weird wildcat stuff the weird wide receiver stuff like all of this just random stuff they have him doing the fact that like he's unpredictable as a player i think is what makes him so versatile and like you know uh he's, so truly effective. A jack, he, he's a jack of all trades dude like he can do so many different things and he's made a career out of it and it stems back to sean payton and how he used him all those years is kind of like his magic little you know puzzle piece like that he could put him anywhere on the field and he could block he can catch he can throw he can run there's not many unicorns out there that can do that no, um, his whole story is, is he's bizarre a, and i just love he's it a, he's a unicorn dude and they use him well seattle fought and hung in there again seattle's not as bad as as we previously thought they are um this is a big win for new orleans kind of a must win game there and they got it done uh so that they can continue to compete in that division we go yeah. down to the jets who are one of the surprise teams of the year you know, obviously, like, they're a young team. They're loaded with rookies. I mean, so many different guys. Like, the rookies are playing, and they're almost in shock, like, that they're winning games and that they're having impactful um, plays every single week. I mean, you saw Brees Hall was like, yeah, some of us rookies were looking at each other like, bro, we're actually pretty good. Like, like they literally are, like, in shock of what they're able to do. I know they beat yeah. up on some bad teams, but putting up 40 points, a nice 40 On the, on the Dolphins, On too. the Dolphins like, defense. No who's, you know, obviously Teddy went down, uh, Bridgewater went down with a concussion, so they're, they're down to their third-string quarterback. But the defense isn't bad, and the Jets putting up 40 points is a big deal. And the Jets' defense, again, Sauce Gardner, some younger guys, like, stepping up, making plays. Um, they're, they're a team that could compete in that division a little bit. Obviously, the Bills are going to win it, but with two out for a while, the Jets could be a second team or second-place team and compete maybe for a playoff spot. I don't know, like, they're win playing good football. Yeah, no, absolutely. This is not the same uh, Jets team that we've seen in years past, for sure. And they're they're young, and they're pretty exciting to watch. Honestly, I mean, obviously, with with forty points, like that's it's, you're having some pretty effective offensive uh, scheming going on there. So, yeah, definitely a team to keep an eye on for sure. Um, Bucks Falcons, and uh, I think this is where we can 
begin our uh, roughing the passer complaints and conversation that will kind of we can maybe jump to, to Raiders Chiefs here. Mm-hmm. Um, like, look, we we kind of get it. Tom Brady gets a, gets a bailout play that that kind of, that kind of just happens when when Tom Brady's you know touched ever a lot of the time. Um, and you know it sucks for Atlanta. They actually did hang in there pretty well, and I think that that uh, play that pretty much just bailed the Bucks out on a, on a big third down uh, was absolutely huge for them, and probably is why they came out and won that game. Um, and then you know you talk about similar tight margin game with Raiders Chiefs, and I, I think that that play with with Carr getting sacked in the fumble recovery and all of that getting reversed over the I don't know that might have been the worst call I've ever seen. Like it's, it's definitely top, top five. Like it's it's horrible. Here's my thing, John. Like you know, and to touch on both these games, um, obviously the Raiders Chiefs game is a little bit more exciting, and I, the Raiders just continue to find ways to lose games. I think they're a really good football team that has a bad record. Um, but like both these calls that you referred to, I mean, we're we're playing on a slippery slope here because we're getting close to the point, and I and this is what the NFL does. They have a short-term problem, right, with what happened with Tua. And they took a lot of shit for it because it was handled poorly and he was seriously injured and it was a, you know, a life-threatening injury that was sustained the following game because of a a lack of how they handled it, right, a lack of awareness of how to handle it. And so what what does the NFL do? They accelerate the process. They they say, reps, you got to call some, like, you got to call rough in the past or, like, if you even are slightly a little bit like, hey, that was too aggressive. And so they push that on the officials. And this is what happens. A week later, we see two of the worst calls in roughing the passer terms I've ever seen. And, and the Bucks game sways the final of the game. Like, it doesn't even give the Falcons a chance to come down and, and uh, compete. And then it was a huge turning point in the Chiefs game. Now, they still ended up coming out on top. But if they get that play their way, this that game is not as close as, close no. as it is. And I will never forget the fans there booing the refs for the rest of the half, right? There was maybe three minutes left in the half. So in football time, that's, you know, probably about 10, 15 minutes. The boos did not stop. Did not stop. It, it was, the ref, the ref, was, the ref, you suck chance did not stop. And I like, and I'm serious. Like it is a slippery slope because we're getting to the point where you can't tackle the quarterback anymore. We're getting to the point where we're going to ha- like, and that will ruin football. If they take my my, deep- my dad said that as a joke maybe six years ago where he's like the it way will- things are trending you're only going to be able to hand touch the quarterback We're, like- we might as well put flags on them we might as well right. put flags on them and just pull the flag because I'm not right. kidding you if they keep doing stuff like this it will ruin football football as we love and know it and half the reason I'm on this podcast talking about it and why I get so fired up and enjoy the sport so much is because of the physicality of it. And that's part of the deal when you sign up and you go play and you get paid millions of dollars to play this game in front of millions of people watching it. Like you're at risk of injury and it's a violent game. It's just part of the deal. Like a UFC fighter doesn't go into a UFC fight and think, well, I'll be protected. He won't hit me in the head. Like, no, it's like you're an, aggr- you're an aggressive sport. Like that's what you right. do. You get paid money to do that. And you signed up for it. You know what you're going into. These guys right. in the NFL aren't just getting thrown out there in, into just like, oh, no, I got hit. I didn't know I was going to get hit. No, you know you're going to get hit. And if you're a quarterback, yeah, maybe you're going to get hit less. But, like, these hits we're talking about weren't even aggressive. Yeah. Well, not I mean, to mention, like, you know, this Tua situation. Like, Tua did not get concussed and have that scary concussion because the defensive linemen were being too aggressive. It's because no. the NFL mishandled concussion protocol. So let, let's actually like focus in on the thing that caused the problem rather than just like, you know, doing this, this stuff that, you know, make it seem like you actually care. No, you actually care when a, you know, a player shows that they have a concussion and you decide not to, you know, find some kind of loophole so that you can play the Dude, next week, four days later. Not only that, like we've had an, we've had an alarmingly high amount of concussions in the NFL in these first five weeks. And most of them, if not like all the ones I've seen, like, I, like live watching a broadcast and like, Hey, that guy's concussed have been from them hitting their head on the ground, not head to head stuff. Right. So this emphasis in over the last years was, Oh, our head to head collisions are causing these. Con- it's, it's the impact of hitting the head on the ground. And if people out there don't know what a concussion is, John, I know you do. It's the brain hitting the inside of the skull. It's not, oh, I hit my head really hard. I have a concussion. It's when you're moving fast 
and your head is moving fast and you get like whiplash. Right, and then it comes and to you, a stop and, and it and your comes to a brain, stop. Right. It's the brain moving inside your skull and hitting it. It's not from just like, if I punch someone in the head, there's not a guarantee they're going to have a concussion because their head, they're not moving. It's going to hurt and they'll have a black eye or the, you know, whatever they bleed, but it's not a concussion necessarily. The concussions are coming from high speed movement impact. And what's happening is these guys are getting swung to the ground or they're diving for a ball or they're falling backwards. And it's when they hit their head on the ground because of the movement of their neck that's right. causing these concussions. So that isn't like these rough in the passers weren't anything like what we saw with Tua. So there was no reason to throw these flags. I'm fired up about it. And I again, it's going to ruin football. If I'm fired up. It. We got to put that on a shirt at some point. I'm fired up. Um, but another thing about that, too, is players like pretty much unanimously agree that all the fields in the NFL should be grass, mostly for ACL and joint related injuries, because there's give to the ground when they pivot. But yeah. also, like, I don't know if any of you guys have been tackled on turf. That shit is not fun. <laughs> it's, it's not really soft. Stinks. It doesn't. It's not soft no. like it looks like, dude. I mean, no, yeah. it is. It is not padding or protective at all. They do it because it's cheap and they don't have to maintain the grass, right? If you actually yeah. get some quality grass out there that is a much more cushioned landing that yeah. actually has a little bit of give to it, so that if players do hit their head on the ground, it's not going to give them that whiplash because their right. skull is forced to stop, right? And yes, like you can run faster and probably change direction better on turf, but it's like as someone who's played on a lot of turf and a lot of grass, like grass is better. Like we used to at central, we had, we had turf fields and in, in every game we played in, uh, we would practice on the grass. Like we had a nice tur indoor turf facility and all that stuff. And we would practice weather permitting outside on the grass because it was better for our legs helped us with recovery and it was safer for, you know, all, all intensive purposes. It was safer. And all players um, say this literally and a, all lot of, players a lot of, a lot of NFL teams do that. They practice on grass and then, right. um, and game day they play on turf and it's like you know it, it just doesn't make any sense to me but yeah that's the situation um, we've put ourselves in definitely and then the last thing i want to touch on too just because we kind of have to because it 100 is a tabloid but Devonte adams frustration and I, like you know he's always been just such a classy non-controversy player his entire life that i'm not gonna like say you know like yeah there's so many idiots on twitter that are out here like saying like oh he's, he's an asshole and stuff like that it's like Oh, he was frustrated yeah. and he made a really bad mistake and he clearly was ashamed of it. Basically the minute that he did it, it doesn't change the fact that he did it. Um, but yeah, I mean, really rough look that entire situation. People were making jokes that I do think is kind of funny is that Vegas does kind of tend to bring out the worst uh, in players just from like a toxicity level. I don't know what it, it is about that. It, team, I mean, but <laughs> listen, like the frustration, obviously at an all time high there in Vegas and we touched on it. Like they're one of the really good teams in the league that have a bad record, you know? And when you lose games like that, it's frustrating, but there's absolutely no excuse for what he did. And the apology, in my opinion, at least the one I saw post game was half ass. I, I think he was still frustrated and was just like, I don't want to talk about this anymore. I know I screwed up, but like, I just, I want to get out of here. Uh, he, he did tweet a more sincere thing and he was actually looking for the guy uh, to like, for people to tag the guy that he actually hit. I'm sure he'll, you know, make it up to him in, in a nice little financial check. Yeah, um, I'm sure it's not going to make it to court. I think he's well aware that yeah, the entire situation's better if they settle it privately. So I'm sure yeah. that's what's going to happen. Um, so, and he's probably going to pay a hefty fine for it too, on top of right. That, and it might so. even face suspension. Yeah, just from what, so, I'm, what I'm seeing. So it's super he'll, serious. He'll definitely be and, and NFL players need to realize too, like their bodies are are superhuman or you know damn near it. Oh yeah, and I mean. Like, you know, a little I mean, shove to, to to a guy like Devontae Adams sent that dude flying. <laughs> like, yeah, you have, it was you have not to be, good. You have to be professional. And it's like you and I can't just go into our jobs and push people. Like, I mean, <laughs> it's not an excuse. Like, you can't just go in and just do that. So no matter who you are, you can't get away with that kind of thing. Yeah, it's um, rough. And it sucks to see it with, with Devontae because, like I said, he's always been such, you know, like a – pretty classy you know mature dude throughout his career yeah. so definitely rough few, few of these other games left john that we'll get into here um the the commanders competed with uh tennessee a little bit carson they Wentz, did. of course does what carson Wentz does throws an interception on the goal line with a chance to to win the game yeah um 
it just, I mean, it's just so funny. I mean, we just see the same uh, thing uh, happening. Did you see Ron Rivera just said point blank? What's the problem with your team right now? He's just like quarterback. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it was a misleading question. And I think that was kind of a, um, kind of a loser answer by him. Cause you know, he's yeah. a defensive minded coach. And the, the question was like, why do you think some of these other teams in the division are doing so well? And what's the difference? Why are you guys not doing well? And he just said, simple answer quarterback. And it's like, okay, dude, Dallas is playing with Cooper rush. Right. And like nothing against Cooper Rush, but he's a backup quarterback and and it's their defense that's winning them games. Right. Seahawks um, are playing with Geno G- Smith. <laughs> like, like they, I mean, and they're making it happen. They're putting up the points. giant. The Giants are playing with Daniel Jones and are, you yeah. know what I mean? Like he's not a star. And then Jalen Hurts is still kind of proving it. Right. He's still kind of proving himself. Like he's, I don't know, man. Really I'm well, still high on the Eagles. Like I think that I'm high on the Eagles, the but Cardinals like, huge. but I mean, no, you Jaylen weren't. Hurts. You're not high on the Eagles. Last week, you're like, oh, they're not what they seem. Downfall. Uh, they're you know, going to have the, a the card, They're, they're going to have their rude peaking. awakening with the Cardinals. They, almost, they should have lost to the Cardinals. It was a missed field goal. The Cardinals are not a bad team, first of all. They're second not. Second of all, the Eagles good. are the only undefeated team. The Cardinals are not good. And listen, the Eagles won't win more than – the Eagles won't win a playoff game. Okay, I'll say that. In the um, NFC. They won't win a playoff game. Where the, the worst of their competition right now, in my opinion, are probably the Packers and Tampa Bay. Who we both saying are showing game. a lot of – Okay, I we'll don't see. think the Eagles will win a playoff game. All right, we'll see. Um, and it, look, and I was then, hating on the Eagles last year, and then I'm like, oh, okay, this this team. And they're gonna lose. They're gonna lose to Dallas, by the way, this week. All right, that this um, is that's gonna be an awesome game. I cannot wait yeah. for that. Um, we go down. We, San Francisco put it on Carolina so bad that they had to fire Matt Rule. <laughs> hey, I I don't know if you saw, but Matt Rule had an all time bad quote as like in his in his exit interview. I don't did you see it. No, they were like it. basically he was like, you know, I believe that it was working and that we're on the right track. And I know no one else does and no one else can see it, but I truly believe that. And he says he's like Jay-Z didn't become Jay-Z. You know, it took him seven years uh to become a star overnight. That's literally what he said. It, it, he Matt said Rule, it took him the next rapper. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, but, but he, the, the words, dude, he said it took him seven years to become an overnight star. And it's like, dude, you're an idiot. You can't even say quotes right. Like, you need to get out of here. Like, you need to leave. Pack your stuff. That's and funny. that's what they did. Um, yeah, he definitely not a good look. Um, curious to see what happens with the rest of their season. Probably, probably not a whole lot. Um, not a whole lot. Now uh, he does get to make forty million dollars doing. Oh nothing, yeah, he listen, being unemployed. Yeah, no one, no one feels for bad him. for the guy. No one <laughs> yeah, feels good for bad him. For him, he'll go. Co- he's gonna probably go get hired at like Nebraska or something and get another and crush it. Yeah, fat contract because he's, yeah, he's totally. a good coach. He's probably a better college coach. But again, NFL coaching is not for everyone. We've seen even like Nick Saban and people have tried it and failed and yep. whatever. Um, uh, we already talked about Cowboys Rams. I mean, say, just too much defensive pressure for the Rams to handle point blank. Uh, Bengals Ravens was a great game. I don't know if you caught much of that, but you know, I, I just love those, yeah, those watched the whole game close, right? Division rivalry, a lot of back and forth, like, and you know, finally the Ravens were actually able to like, you know, claw back and, and hang on to that lead rather than just being like, like lights out for the entire game and then finding a way to lose. So that was exciting to see as well. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed John, but like in the past, the, the, the Ravens have played a lot of man to man defense against Burrow. And um, that's what they want to do, right? Like they're, that's Harbaugh's thing is they want to play man to man and get pressure on the quarterback. Well, that clearly hasn't worked the last, this past year. Um, And so they went and played a lot of zone and it, and it kind of put Joe Burrow in in some tough situations. I mean, clearly they only scored 17 points. Um, I don't know. I'd be a little bit worried if I'm a Bengals fan, because in that division, when someone starts to figure you out a little bit, it, it can be concerning. I mean, you see those guys twice a year and, that's a team that obviously like it's a, you have to win some of those games to win your uh, division, make get a playoff spot. And the Ravens seem to have them figured out a little bit. And last year, I mean, we saw Joe Burrow just absolutely torch him. Um, and the Ravens came out and said, not this time. And they played a different, you know, give them credit. They played a different philosophy, different scheme, and it worked. And I would be a little bit worried about that matchup, you know, in that division. Definitely. Definitely. And, uh, you know, I mean, the Steelers obviously aren't the same team that they were. The Browns are playing decent. So, you know, it, I'm definitely interested to see kind of how these these teams within the division beat up on each other over the next few weeks here. Um, so that's definitely exciting. All right. Uh, so we're going to try to speed run our, our picks for next week like we did last time. But I think, uh, oh, there's Mark getting rocked by Troy again. 
<laughs> um, but I think that we, we'll go back and forth rather than just running down. So there's maybe a slight amount of debate or we can, you know, uh, talk trash uh, going down here. Hey, side note, John, if you did you X out of that picture? I did, unfortunately. All right. Well, uh, you guys, if you're watching on YouTube, you saw the picture. If not, just for a fun fact, similar to like Will Ferrell and Kicking and Screaming, he took a punch from Hall of Fame Mike Dicka. I didn't go down. I took a shot, but I didn't go down. I may have wobbled a little bit, you know, to quote Will Ferrell, but I didn't go down. I took a punch from Hall of Famer Mike Dicka. <laughs> if anyone gets oh, the man. reference from kicking and screaming. Uh, uh, little, little known fact is that Mark loves like every Will Ferrell movie, basically. This, this dude has been quoting Step Brothers to me for a decade now. Dude, so. no dip. Who doesn't like Will Ferrell? <laughs> oh, Come man. On. Yeah, you know, you're kind of basing your entire personality around boats and hoes, basically. But that's all right. It's it's kind I mean, of kind of your brand. He's great. You know? He's great in every single movie that he's in, dude. I mean, he's one of the funniest dudes alive. And he's he's I, great. I, I I saw an opportunity for a joke. I made one. You know what I mean? Sue me. <laughs> all right. Um, speaking of jokes, uh, Thursday night football. <laughs> Yeah, that's a funny one. Your joke's better than mine for sure because that shit is terrible. It's that so is the bad. toilet bowl, dude. That is the toilet uh, bowl of all toilet bowls. After Chipotle, rushing home, <laughs> barely make it home, have to walk clenched type of game. Like that is terrible. And, it's uh, it's real. Bad. I don't think it actually will be as bad to watch as the. Um, Indy no, I think I think it'll one. be fun to watch just because of how bad both teams are. Well, like Denver and Indy, like think that they're good teams, and obviously they aren't based off of that performance. And it was like watching paint dry. This one, it will be you know more like watching a, a porta potty get like flinged into the air by like a catapult or something, right? Like it's... right. I like your analogy. <laughs> I'm gonna have my own analogy here. Yeah, last week was like watching paint dry. This week is like if you go like and just put a bunch of stuff in the garbage can like just that old food fast food wrappers all that stuff and then you light it on fire it's gonna smell like shit which this game smells like shit but it's actually kind of fun to watch it burn you know what i mean right. yeah sure. so like that's Definitely. what i think is gonna be thursday night it's gonna be watching a garbage fire burn and it's gonna smell awful and it's gonna be like you have to turn away but like you're also like i kind of want to watch it because it's so intriguing it's terrible <laughs> Okay, so we do have to pick a winner for it, unfortunately. I promise this is the most dialogue we'll have about any of these. It's just it, it, too bad of a matchup to, to not make fun of. Um, I'm going to say Commanders here. I think they're, they're due for a win. <laughs> can I can I pick neither? <laughs> can I pick a tie? <laughs> I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the Bears. I, I just think the Bears maybe have – I think Justin Fields, believe it or not, is going to do more than Carson Wentz, which is unbelievable. But I'm going to pick the Bears. Definitely possible. Okay, uh, I'm going to take 49ers, Mark. Uh, 49ers as well. Um, Pat's Browns is interesting. I'm going to say just purely based off of, uh, you know, how the Pats are doing with their third-string quarterback situation. I'm going to go Browns. I'm also going to go with the Browns. The Patriots, don't get it twisted. They're not as good as people. Like, again, the Lions make They just beat up on the Lions. They make teams look better than they are. It's as simple as that. Jets Packers is interesting. I'm kind of excited about that one. Um, uh, I'm going to say because it's at Lambeau, I'm going to go Packers. Packers, it's listen, it's a bounce back game. They're pissed off. They're not going to lose to both New York teams in back to back games. I mean, use our brain, kids, right? Use our brain. The backers and Aaron Rodgers are not going to lose to the Giants and the Jets in two weeks in a row. Yeah, uh, Rodgers is probably filled with rage right now, even at the the prospect of that. Um, Jags, Colts, going to go Jags. Uh, I think they're a good team. I think based off of last week's performance, the Colts are not a good team. So, Didn't these two teams play already? Uh, no, I don't think so. Are you oh, sure wait, they yes, they did. did. No, no, no. They, they, went to, to, they went to Duval and they got smacked. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. understand why they're already playing again. Like, that's, that's kind bizarre. Of, me, for, I don't know divisional. why they're already playing again. But um, I'm going to go with the Colts I, if, in Indy. I, I mean, the Colts at some point have to start to figure it out defensively. And the Jags, it's like it's like kind of the two teams. Like, the Jags started good and seemed to be decreasing in terms of what they're doing. And the Colts started bad and are, like, slightly getting better. They still suck. Keywords, but, um, yeah, I'm going to go with the Colts. I just, I feel like you can't lose to the Jags 
twice in four weeks, right? Like you have to figure it out. It's an in-division game. Um, Vikings, Dolphins, is Tua back? I, it, un, it's undeclared yet. We don't know. I'm going to go Dolphins either way. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go Vikings. I even with, with or without Tua, I think the Vikings like just this is the type of game that Kirk Cousins thrives in like the one o'clock game <laughs> against like a team that might have a starter might not. Right. You probably, don't want to catch him probably in high, time. Probably high scoring, but yeah. I'm going to go Minnesota. Um Saints Bengals uh it's at Nola. Um look, I'm going to go Saints here. I, th- I think they, they hopefully are turning a corner with that win and they're gaining some confidence back. I'm going to go with Cincinnati. I, um, the Saints, you know, obviously they're still trying to figure out what they want to do on offense. The Taysom Hill experiment isn't going to work against Cincinnati's defense. They, they're they a better defense than Seattle. So I'm going to go with Cincinnati, and, and Burrow is obviously going to be playing with an edge. Right. Um, Ravens, Giants. I'm going to go Ravens here. A good I'm, also matchup, go, though. I'm also gonna go Ravens again. I I don't think the Giants are good. I the Giants are like the the Giants and the Raiders are opposite. Like the Giants are four and one and they blow, and the Raiders are one and four and they're like really good. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Um I, this is a good test, right? If if the Giants do actually have like a dominant win against the Ravens, I might consider my stance that they're they they stink, but right now I think they stink. Yeah. So um buck Steelers gotta go bucks here Steelers, i i haven't seen enough from them to think they'll win this game uh pick yeah, still trying I, to figure it out i have to pick tampa as well uh kenny pickett's gonna struggle against that defense and the bucks obviously they don't look great offensively but they're doing enough to win games right um panthers rams gotta go rams yeah, I, I'm going to go Rams. I mean, they just fired their coach, and the Rams have lost two bad games in a row. And they're like playing a not good team. So, yeah, it's that's at, Ra- it's Rams. In LA. I feel like you have to figure it out. If you're LA, this is like a must win, or you're like on serious alert. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, the, the Rams beat up on bad teams. Like, that's what they do. So, um, Cardinals, Seahawks. That's a good, interesting divisional matchup. I'm going to take Seahawks here, actually. I'm also going to take Seahawks. Um, the Cardinals have everything on paper that say that they're the better team, but Geno Smith is playing at a high level. They are going to establish the run against Arizona. It's a tough place to play at. Uh, I'm going to go with Seattle in a division game. Cool. Uh, Bills at Chiefs. I'm going to go Bills here. I'm sure you are as well. I'm actually curious. Any chance uh, we can like live stream part of this game? Uh, Absolutely, we should do. What, what? When is this game? Four four thirty. So four thirty on Sunday. Yeah. yeah, good chance that um that John and I will will do some sort of thing. Hope maybe probably towards the end of the game. In between, yeah, and and uh, kind of get maybe the last like fourth quarter, like the last few minutes of the game would be pretty cool. But I'm gonna go with Buffalo. Uh, this is one of the premier games of the season. In my Cannot opinion, I, I just wait. don't think you don't get better matchups than this. Like these are the two quarterbacks of this generation um, they're going to be competing in the AFC for a long time, but yeah, I'm going to go with the bills to go and get their revenge. Both teams are clicking. And I just think that the bills are a little bit better on defense. Um, Cowboys Eagles that Sunday night football. It's a good primetime game. I'm excited to watch that. I'm going to go Eagles. And if I remember correctly, you're going to go Cowboys, right? I'm going to go Dallas. Yeah. I listen, the Eagles haven't seen a pass rush like this yet. And I just think Fair. it's going to over. I know they have a good offensive line and stuff, but um, the the Dallas defensive front is is just too much, and Micah Parsons is just too much. And they, you know, they're, again, they're just going to manage the game. And I think Dallas will do it. It will be a close game, but they'll do enough, and they'll, I think they'll put enough pressure on Jalen Hurts to cause some issues. Like the stuff that Philly wants to do offensively with like the RPOs and stuff is going to be tough with what Dallas does. So I'm going to go with Dallas. Definitely. Um, and then finally. I told you, they're always in prime time. They always find a way to get in prime time. Do you need to throw up or you, do you need a bowl? I'm so up? mad. I'm so mad right now. So... Why do I have to watch this team play football, Mark? John, listen. Why do you, on I the have bright, to watch the Denver on, Broncos play football, Mark? On the bright side, you get Chargers to Chargers by 1,000. 
that's, Chargers, that's what I <laughs> Chargers big time. Justin Herbert is going to put on a show, I think. Listen, Denver does have a good defense. And it's going to be boring because of that. And we're going to be like, oh, why can't the Chargers do anything? Because the Denver's defense is going to hold them in the game. But well, like, yeah, I mean, it'll be, listen, the Chargers will do more offensively than like Indy did. Okay. They like, will. We'll, yes. So we'll see Eckler make some plays. We'll see some, some long throws from Herbert. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know what this, it, it's almost like the NFL is just like, hey, we're going to just force you. It's it's the meme of um, I don't know if anyone watched what was that movie the scary movie with um, uh, what was it called with um, Sandra Bullock and you have to your you can't open your eyes if you open your eyes what was that thing that called out oh why can't I remember the name of it too it's bird but yes, something it. is it bird something yeah something like that okay well that movie that me and John can't think of where they bird they box force, bird box bird box yeah and they force you to open your eyes like I've seen that meme a million times of like hey Denver. <laughs> Like you have to watch them, you know what I mean. Like, like see it. NFL. This is Ro- Roger, my friend. Um, I have watched your product for two decades of my life. Please stop making me watch the Denver Broncos in prime time. Nobody wants to see it. Nobody likes it. Nobody wants to watch Russ cook. Nobody wants to ride. Not even Broncos fans, right? Let's just let's just put the put an end to this, please. Put me out of my misery. All right, that's my PSA. Sin- sin- sincerely, John Vocal. Yes. Um, He'll get that right. one. He'll get that. All right, Mark. Um, I think that does it for this episode. I think we this was our longest episode to date, uh, which is, uh, thank God we had a guest. I don't think I could tolerate just you for an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> that's funny. I, I last John, word. John. John likes to bring on his own jokes. You know what I mean? And uh, his jokes tend to put me down and I'll let him do that. If that puts him on his pedestal, but I like to, uh, I like to make other jokes. Look, all I know is that you hate on just about everything NFL related. So I need to be your hater, right? So it's like a double heel situation. You're the heel for the NFL. I'm the heel for the heel. There we go. Whatever, whatever, however you want to twist it in your sick mind and make it justified to just beast me nonstop constantly. But listen, NFL, we're starting to figure out, we're starting to see, this is all starting to come together here. Um, you know, getting into bye weeks and stuff like that is really important because teams, like you said, John, really do change through bye weeks. Um, and I'm excited to see it, man. Another week down, another week to go. Hopefully get some more guests on here moving forward. And, uh, like John said in the last episode, continue to send it to people, share, subscribe, and we're really enjoying Get, doing this. Mark is podcast microphone. To, yeah, to 100 subscribers on YouTube gets me a Please. podcast mic. Please. And you can hear my voice even clearer than you can with these AirPods. Spewing hatred, just visceral Spewing hatred. Spewing fire and just <laughs> All right. total hate. <laughs> Until next week, audience. See Prison you guys.